right, all right, all right. We get our live going. Make sure that Facebook is up and ready to roll. Arc the arc. We're getting things going here. What is good? We live. We are now live stream. What is up, Arc? Good to see everybody. We'll let a couple people start to filter into the room here. But uh man, I love doing these every week. Uh, you know, we we've been doing this for I don't know, I guess probably about a month now or so. Um, but we host these live weekly streams um every single Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern time. And the reason why is because there's a lot of stuff, crazy, crazy stuff going on in the world right now, right? And I think that as entrepreneurs and as individuals and as husbands and as mothers and fathers and wives and stuff like that, we need a little bit of guidance right we need that structure we need that arc if you will right so we're going to be going through a couple different things today i'm super pumped for this one today by the way right um but as we jump in okay um i want to know who's with us right so go smash that like button and drop some love in the comments right we want to keep this thing blowing up every single week and of course at the end of this live stream probably run about 20 25 minutes or so we cut this off and then we run it behind the scenes exclusively for the members of the ARC, for the individuals that are on board the ARC here, absolutely blown things up. A lot of excitement, a lot of good things happening there. Now, today, we're going to have a little bit of a conversation about maps, right? Um, for those of you that know me, I'm a huge fan of maps right you can probably you can probably see right here we, we got i got a map sitting right above me i wish i could have maps all over the place to be truthful with you i think that maps are so important to navigating where we're going you know you would never jump in your car and drive to to new york from arizona and we're in phoenix obviously without a map right? The, the first thing I'm doing when I get in the car is I'm punching in the coordinates on my GPS, right? Nobody in the right mind anymore is just driving, right? You're going to get lost. You're going to spend more time. You're going to spend more energy and you're going to spend more money when it's completely unnecessary. So what do you do when you find yourself caught in a whirlwind? What do you do when you find yourself caught in the, the vast darkness and the chaos of life what do you do when you're lost without a map well this is a common struggle this is something that a lot of people deal with and what i'm about to share today is the importance of mapping things out as well as a step-by-step process to not feeling lost but instead to be found right we touched on this a little bit last week but please stay with me on this one because th this is things that that can prevent yourself from falling into chaos or you from you can, it can prevent the structure underneath you from being ripped out and you plunging into the darkness into the water without a paddle right so the fascinating thing about the way that we operate is that anxiety comes up, anxiety bubbles up when what you think should happen and what actually happens is not the same. This is how our brain works. Our, our brain does its best to predict. And when its predictions are not accurate it creates anxiety it creates adrenaline right your pupils dilate you breathe heavier your heart races it's trying to get more and more blood flow and oxygen to the brain your body's trying to prepare it's trying to figure out if it should run if it should fight what the heck should happen right and that's what happens when your map is wrong right you know it's it's fascinating we talked about this a little bit last week that when somebody goes through trauma, typically betrayal, the thing that hurts the most 
is that everything that you thought in the past was true was wrong. Your map was wrong. Everything that you thought about where you are right now was wrong. Your map was wrong of the president. Everything that you thought the future would be, the journey that you were on is no longer the journey that you were going to be on. Your map was wrong and betrayal causes that to crumble. I believe that betrayal is one of the most difficult things for a human being to deal with. I also think that it's one of the most evil things that a human being can put on somebody else. Betrayal is brutal. So the importance of having a map to navigate that is big. You know, I remember a, a time in my life where I had I'd gone through a little bit of, of, of betrayal. And during the moment, right, it was simple to deal with, right? Because it was a, it was a long time coming, wasn't stressed about it. But I started to realize that man, my map is wrong, right? What I thought was and what I thought is and what I thought was going to be is no longer accurate. What am I supposed to do about that, right? And thankfully, I had the wherewithal to ask and get advice and get guidance and read and research. And I was still mentally sane enough to figure that out. And one of the most relieving things for me was to sit down and just plan out my next seven days, right? Just plan out what I wanted the next week to look like. If the next week of mine went perfect, if the next week of mine went exactly how I wanted it to go, what would that look like, right? And it started to alleviate a little bit of that anxiety, right? And then after I got done with the week, I said, okay, what do I want my next month to look like? If I could fast forward 30 days, if I could be the author in my story, if I could produce my movie, what would that look like, right? Do I want this to be a heroic story? Do I want this to be a, a victim story, right? Do I want to be the hero in my own story? And the answer is inevitably and absolutely yes. And so I drew out what those next 30 days should look like. Now, going past 30 days to 60 or 90 or 120 or 365, it, it, you start to get a little bit lost because the further in the future you try to predict, the more variables there are and the more likely it's not going to be accurate. But 30 days is a good spot to start, especially when you don't know what tomorrow looks like, especially when you don't know what tonight is going to look like. And it was incredible to see all the anxiety and the hurt and the feeling of betrayal just diminish, right? And that was a wonderful thing, right? So understanding that that role of taking charge amidst life chaos is pretty crucial, right? Your role as a your the, the captain of your ship at the helm of your arc is to navigate, right? But you can't navigate without a map. And there's two things on a map. That are extremely important, right? And arguably three or four, but two main points, where you are and where you're going. And I think it's very easy for people to understand where they want to go, or maybe not even understand, but even project or scribe or produce where they want to go. Because we all have goals, right? We all have visions. We all have areas that we want to move in, but it's very difficult for people to take a honest and authentic perspective of where they are now. In order to look at where you are now, it's humbling. It takes authenticity and a brutal amount of honesty. And this isn't something that you can necessarily ask somebody else because only you know, right? This is the power of prayer right? You can sit down, you can ask whatever you want to pray to. What's going on with me right now? What are issues am I dealing with internally? What am I doing that I know I should not be doing? And you'll get the answer pretty quickly, but it's a difficult answer to accept. But you need to know where you are, or you can't figure out how to get to where you want to go. You need to ask yourself, what are these stupid things that I'm doing that I know I need to stop? You need to ask yourself, what are these things that I'm not doing that I know I need to start, right? What are the regrets? What are those things? And don't cloud it. Don't make a mess. Don't make it foggy. Don't blur your vision by asking somebody else because now you're thinking of their perspective. You need to look from your perspective, you and your God. Right? You need to know where you are. You need to know where you're going. And without either one of those, it's a very hard map to draw. All right. So the first step in that is figure out where you want to go. 
right? Number one, figure out where it is that you want to go. Figure out who you want to be. Figure out who you want to emulate. What are some traits of other individuals that you want to adopt and become like, right? Who do you idolize, right? And it doesn't need to be every aspect of an individual, right? There's only one perfect person, right? But who is it that you want to become like, right? What do you want to make in business? Are you good with five grand a month, 10, 20, 50 grand a month? What does that look like? It's all possible. Right. Where do you want to live? Where do you want your, your your environment and your community to look like? What about your family? Right. What sort of relationships do you want to have? Do you want to have a strong relationship with your wife built on trust? Do you want to have a strong relationship with your parents or your siblings or your children built on trust, a foundation of authenticity? where you can love each other to your maximum capacity because you're not constantly worried about if they're doing what they said they were going to do because you know that that is intact. What do you want your physical health to look like? What do you want your financial health to look like? Your spiritual health, right? Your emotional health. What is all that that you want? And I'm telling you, draw your map out, right? Write it down. Step two, where are you now? Right? What needs to change about you right now in order to move in that direction? If you were living in a movie, if you were writing your book, and this was the beginning of it, what things need to change in order for you to be the hero in that story? What needs to be modified what do you need to do? Which part of you needs to burn off and, dis and disintegrate into the ground so that something new can form? And I'll tell you what, don't think it's one or two things. For, for many of us, it's most of us. M many of us have so many damn layers from years and years and years and years of going down the wrong path that it hurts to make this change. But it hurts even more to keep going down the wrong path, especially when that flood comes, especially when that universe peeks its head out and smacks you with a heavy dose of reality. I remember early on in business, um, I, I was remarkably frustrated. Um, probably for a, a couple months, right? And I, I was working seven days a week, you know, 16, 17, 18 hours a day. I was just grinding. That's all I knew. If, if things got tough, work harder, right? If, if things were going wrong, work harder. Nobody cares. Work harder. And finally, I broke. I, I remember laying in my office just thinking, what the like my 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 brain was was so clouded it was such a mess i was just lost in this vast darkness i ended up calling a great friend of mine um a great great friend of mine you know shout out to her by the way araya right araya if you're listening shout out to you um she was a um a, a therapist and i was like hey i just need like i need a little bit of your time and she said ryan here's what you need to understand you are going to max out at some point, right? But you need to make the decision how you're going to take your break. She's like, rest is work. Rest is necessary. Rest is something that is vitally important. And you're going to rest one way or another, but it's up to you to choose how. You can make the decision to take a break every once in a while and bounce back stronger and be more efficient. Or you can let reality choose that for you. And I'll tell you what, when reality chooses it, it's going to put you in a spot for longer than you want to be there. A spot where you don't want to be. It's going to be more expensive than you want it to be in both time, energy, and or in time, energy, and money, right? And that's not a place that you want to be because the universe is vicious. Okay? And I thought that was such an interesting way to look at things, right? I, th I thought that was a remarkable way to look at things. So, there's things that need to burn off. There's things that need to change, right? What are those things, right? And you don't know what those things are unless you start with where you are, right? And then you can start correcting. 
you can start one minor trait, one puzzle piece at a time, moving in the direction of the person that you want to be. Guys, listen, the most powerful thing on this planet is your brain. That is the most valuable piece of real estate, the six inches between your ears. When you can capture that, when you can manage that, when you have control over your mind, that is mind control. That is powerful. That is special because now you dictate the things that happen in your life. Everything that you see from the skyscrapers to the race cars to the planes flying through the sky, that was first a thought. The fact that we can have this sort of conversation through a series of lenses and light and electrical signals and this vast network of things that need to work just perfectly for you to see and hear me in sync, right? These were just thoughts. Somebody created that. So if you think that you can't pull yourself out of whatever you're going through right now, but we can create all this, you're crazy. You need control over your mind, right? Your brain is the most powerful thing that we have. Right? So when we start to discover the extraordinary value that we possess, the when we start to discover the extraordinary control that we have, when we start to have power over our own thoughts, right? you start to steer your life in the direction that you want to steer it. You, you, you take the reins of your life. Right. So this ain't just a conversation. Right. This is about being transformative. Right. This is aimed at reclaiming what's ours, our life. Right. This is what we got going on. This is the powerfulness in us. And sometimes we need a reset. Right. I, I think you should reset a couple times a week. Shoot. I think you should reset a couple times a day. Now, it doesn't mean for six hours at a time. Maybe it's just one minute. Right. Maybe it's while you're in the shower or on the bath and you just need to talk to yourself a little bit, pull yourself out of whatever you're going through. And then maybe it's once a week and then a big one once a month or once a quarter. Right. But you got to you need to know where those rest stops are. Right. So how do we get from A to B? Know where B is. Step one. Know where A is. Step two. And start building your path between A and B. And, you know, the beautiful thing about this, the reason why I, I love maps is because you can have a map of anything. For, for example, let's say financially, you know, we're, we're in the financial services business. We help people with their money. We show people how to launch businesses, right? We're in the business of putting people into business so that they can control their finances, so that they can pass something on. So let's talk about finances for a second. If you have goals, of paying off your debt and saving money, maybe for a down payment or that honeymoon that you didn't ever get the chance to go on or the kid's college tuition. You got to know where that is. You got to know what that looks like. You need to know where your debt is, how much it is, your interest rates, your balance, your minimum payment. You need to know how much you need to save on a monthly basis to hit your goals of paying for the kid's tuition or the mortgage or the honeymoon or whatever it may be. You also need to know where you're at. Right? What can I afford to do right now? What does my cash flow look like right now? And is there anything that needs to be cut out or added? And a lot of the times you realize once you put your map together, that you're actually a lot closer than you think. You see, when you're lost in the dark, you could be anywhere, everywhere, and nowhere. But the second you have a map, you know to the T, to the pinpoint where you are. And that in itself is relief. Right? So when it comes to a financial journey, if it wouldn't make sense to hop in the car and drive to New York blindly, why would it make sense to hop in your financial vehicle and just start driving blindly? Right? You need to have a map. Physically, right? where do you want to be at? Where do you want to weigh? Right? Can't really change your height, but what do you want to look like? Right. What, what, what is your perfect weight? And in, in my opinion, I don't think a perfect weight is something that you come up with. I think the result of where you end up when you take care of yourself. Right. So where do you start? Where, where you are? Maybe you need to go through your exercise routine. 
How often do you get off your ass and go for a walk, right? How often do you go lift something up or go for a jog or do a couple sit-ups or burpees in the morning? All right, what does that look like? Right? So take a realistic perspective of where you want to be. Get a realistic perspective of where you are right? and start putting together a game plan to get from where you want to be. And you know the beautiful thing about this is any direction is a good direction. The only bad direction is standing still or moving in a random direction that you can't track. Right. You know, the beautiful thing about many things that involve skill or perspective or some sort of journey, we'll use working out, for example, is anything's better than nothing. Right. Saving a couple dollars is better than spending it on something stupid. Right. Oh, Ryan, I'm just, I, I just I, I don't have the energy to go to the gym for an hour. Go to the gym for 30 minutes. Brian, I, I don't have the time to go to the gym for 30 minutes. Go to the gym, gym for 10. Right. Ryan, I, I haven't been to the gym in, in, in years. I don't even think I know what to do in there. Don't go to the gym. Bust out the yoga mat in, in your living room. Ryan, I don't have a living room. Great. Do it on the carpet. Ryan, I don't have a carpet. Go for a walk. There is always something you can do. Ryan, I can't get out of bed. Do a sit up, lift your arm, lift your wrist, your finger. There was always something you can do to progress. And when you get 1% better or even half a percent better, just like the rule of 72, that compounds. Emotionally, right? I don't even know where to start with my emotions. Google it. It's better than nothing. Probably don't want to WebMD it, right? That'll result in cancer for sure, right? But hop on Amazon and find a, a book that you can read about controlling your emotions. Ryan, I don't have the time to read. Get an audio book, right? Here's one. Stop making excuses. Watch what that does, right? Take responsibility. We talked about that about a month ago, right? The best thing you can do is take responsibility. Then it's your fault. And you better damn well believe that you want it to be your fault and nobody else's. Right. Why? Well, you can control that. All right. So having a map is remarkably important. All right. Having a GPS, guidance, map quest, a random acknowledge, right? To track where you are, where you've been, where you want to go, and start moving in that direction is big. So when our focus turns to living a intentional life things inevitably get better okay so one of the things that i, I want to challenge everybody to uh this month i know we're on december 5th it's 12 5 this is something that we've been doing a little bit is a dopamine detox and i'm not going to spoil this i i think that you get far more out of your journey when you do the research and when you dig into it but i would encourage you to do a dopamine de detox in December, right? Why? Because uh, December starts with a D and so does detox and so does dopamine, right? I think that's a good enough reason. Look it up, right? Why would that be a powerful thing? Why would that be a, a beneficial thing to get your dopamine reset to a healthy baseline? Do it for seven days, right? Eradicate mindless social media scroll. Right. See how you feel after that. I feel bet you feel better. I guarantee you will feel better. Right. Do it for 30 days after that. Right. Just get back. You know, I was having a conversation, Rico Price, right? Shout out Rico. Um, we're having a conversation about when was the last time that you were bored? Right. Do you remember the last time you were bored? I don't remember the last time I was bored. Right. I don't know how you can be bored in today's environment. There are so many damn things to do right but i think that's not a good thing i think we need to be bored i think it's necessary first of all it gives our brain a chance to chill but second of all it makes us appreciate the activity inactivity allows us to appreciate the activity right the 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 void in a cup is the cup's utility 
right? The, the time where you have nothing to do is what gives you the gratitude for when you do have things to do. But man, when was the last time we were bored? I can't remember, right? And it's interesting because over the last five days here, right? I, I've really consciously and intentionally thought when I go to reach for my phone to not, why am I picking my phone up? Oh yeah, I was just thinking about something on Facebook and wanted to just scroll. No, I, and don't pick it up. And I'll just sit there and be with myself. Just be bored. It was nice being bored again. I'll admit it was really nice because then when I started doing something, my mind was focused and I enjoyed it and I appreciated it. And I love the time that I had spending with people, right? So let's do that, right? Commit to yourself. Give this thing seven days, right? Today's Tuesday, December 5th, right? Run that until Tuesday, December 12th. I'd love to hear your feedback on that, right? Go ahead and shoot me a DM. Would love to know what you want to detox from. Would love to know your progress throughout the week. And if you're down, run this for a whole 30 days like us. And we'll probably run this, you know, into the new year as well, right? But that's the call to action today, okay? That's the call to action. I'm pumped for that. So listen, we're going to shut this thing down. We got a whole bunch of agents hopping in uh, to the private Zoom room here. So I'm really excited to get this thing cracking. Really excited to dig deep into the importance of maps. We're going to get some good training on the mindset and the tangibles about how to build a business, why to be an entrepreneur, to really take advantage of that sort of stuff and get this thing popping big. I'm so pumped. But listen, um, happy December, everybody. Uh, appreciate y'all. Love y'all. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.